Hello, welcome to this video. So this video, we're just gonna go through and we're actually gonna start just uh, fitting out a whole bunch of ships, right? The last part, we just uh, went through the ships, went through the uh, ship tree, boarded the shuttle. So we uh, <coughs> went through the ship tree over here, looked at the different ships, and we looked at the different uh, shuttles that there are that we could fly. And then we went to the attributes to see what uh, stats are modified by them, right? So if we uh, click here, it would show the uh, base stats of the ship. Then if we show information here, they would highlight to green to show that our, our skills are making these stats better. So with uh, that information, we were able to go to our skill tree. So this is just the uh, shuttle before we even uh, fit anything, right? Before looking at any weapons, go to the ship tree, uh, <coughs> leave your ship, buy a shuttle, and then uh, board the shuttle, and then this would pretty much give you the basics of uh, all the uh, defensive skills for your ship pretty much, right? So we found here, this would show you when you hover over it, like this uh, capacitator management to improve this skill here. And it shows you, we need like a capacitator system operation. We could use long range targeting to improve this. We could get a uh, navigation to improve our movement speed. And uh, it doesn't actually show when you hover over it, but there is skills to allow us to fit more things which I guess it doesn't make a difference because it can't fit anything on this ship. So, after you've gone through your shuttle, maybe you go to your uh, mastery tab, right? Then go to your mastery tab, check to see if there's any uh, any skills you can add, right? We had to add uh, shield operation 2. Once we trade that skill, we'll have the level 2 mastery for this ship. And we'll have the level 3 mastery like uh, one day in three hours if we trade. So by looking at this, we were able to see that we could add navigation forward to the skill tree. We added a warp drive operation, and we actually went and added some uh, shield operation skills and shield management. So just by uh, going through, looking at the shuttle, looking at the mastery tree mostly, this will just give you a good idea of uh, skills that you might want to trade. Then look at the like uh, level 4 mastery certificate, right? So you pretty much already uh, had these trade. Yeah, they, get, they start at level 3, and then I think we uh, trade them up to level 4. Hall upgrades actually almost trade. So once we get that, we'll have uh, that part of the certificate done. So all that the uh, certificates do, they don't actually uh, give your ship any bonuses or benefits or anything. All it does is just give you a good idea of uh, goals to build in your skill tree to help your character, basically. We look here, right? So <clears throat> we looked at these. We added all these skills up to level 3 or level 4. So we have all the skills on the skill tree except for navigation 5. Because for level 5 skills, add some level 4 skills. We're going to wait on getting them. Just because they take so long to trade, right? Because of this uh, 4 days and 7 hours, we could get this to increase our uh, movement speed by another 5%. Or at the uh, same time, we could get a bunch of other things done. So I think we're just getting shield management out of the way because it's actually like uh, two days, five hours. But that's not even accurate, right? Because uh, shield management for takes like a uh, one day is 21 hours by itself, right? Plus the uh, other skills that we're leveling. So <clears throat> so it's actually a whole lot quicker than that, right? It's a lot quicker than it actually uh, says it's going to trade. So if it says it's going to take like uh, 44 days, maybe it only takes like uh, one month to trade it, right? It's not sure why it doesn't uh, show it accurately. Not sure why it doesn't show it accurately. It doesn't, uh, <coughs> it doesn't take your skills. Looks like this one is, 3 days and 11 hours. Sometimes it shows them properly, right? If you throw this here, it'll show like 3 days and 11 hours. Then we can, oh no, we can't double click it. So anyways, we'll just continue through. Went through the shuttle, looked at the mastery here. And then the uh, next step, the next step after that, would be to start looking at the uh, Corvettes, right? So since we already had this sheet set up, we had uh, this planned out, and it gave us a little help to decide what skill is to get for the ship, based on the uh, modules that it starts with. So we just go to the ship tree, went to Kaldari, and we looked at the Corvette, and we bought the Corvette, and then we flew the Corvette. <clears throat> so the Corvette actually uh, starts with some weapons equipped, right? All you do is just uh, buy it for the marketplace. Cost uh, ten thousand to buy it, so it just costs like nine thousand to buy this ship, and the ship uh, already comes with some modules equipped, right? So we already looked at that. We already uh, 
show information and these uh, green numbers will show you pretty much uh, what scales affect what on this ship what on this uh, module right so once we start looking at weapons we go here try to figure out uh, what scales might help them so we went through that I think we also looked at the uh, mastery tree right show information here and then we go to your uh, skill tree here and then you look at the mastery tab and then this will just give you a, a bigger broader idea right because it said it's going to take 44 days now it's going to take uh, 602 days but pretty much this corvette is just trying to like uh, almost uh, almost master every single caldera ship so if we like uh, look at the other ones later it'll say that we can master them uh, faster just because we're mastering just a uh, half of the tree right so let's say this uh, Corvette takes like 602 days, right? 602 days to master this Corvette. But if we use it like the uh, Kestrel, we take 412, uh, 412 days. 412 days, just because we just need to master the uh, small missiles tap, small missiles track. So like here, we need to master the uh, small missiles track plus the small hybrid turret track, right? Plus if we go here, if we just look at the, the uh, Berlin, which is just the uh, hybrid turrets, right? 380 days. That's just because uh, this ship, to get the mastery, we don't need to get the missile skills. This one, we're just focus focusing on the uh, hybrid turret skills. So it still take a long time to get the level five certificate, right? That's why we started at the uh, shuttle first, essentially. But by getting the uh, certificate on the, uh, <coughs> Corvette, it would pretty much just be working towards the uh, level 3 certificate for like uh, every single ship, right? Small hybrid turret, we'll have to get those level 4, maybe uh, once we rebound or something, right? So if it comes to a point where it makes sense to trade uh, some other skills, we'll be doing that, right? So we'll go through here, we got the Corvette. So I think we'll uh, view market details and we'll buy another one. So now we have two of them, <coughs> two of them. The reason to do this, the reason to buy two of these Corvettes is because we have this Corvette here, right? This Corvette, he has like a civilian Gatling gun or he has a civilian mining laser and the civilian afterburner. And if we were to board this Corvette, he would have the same thing. So the first thing that we want to do to upgrade this Corvette would be to buy drones for it. So consider we're a Caldari. We're going to be in Caldari space. We're going to be wanting to use uh, kinetic damage, right? Caldari drones have kinetic damage and we want uh, kinetic and thermal resistance, which the drones have. Basically, whatever space area we're in, those are the type of drones we want. So if we just go a uh, regional market, right? Go to the regional market. We're searching for drones, combat drones, light scout drones, and here's the different drones, right? So this would be like the Amar drone, right? So here's the Amar drone. So we show information, right? This Amar attributes, it would be best for Amar space, right? Armor would have the highest EM resistance, EM uh, thermal, which it needs, and it deals EM damage. So this would be a drone you would use in Amar space. And the Hobgoblin, right? This has a... Uh, Thermal plus uh, kinetic resistance, plus it deals uh, thermal damage. So this would be best for Galante space. And here's the Minimitar one, right? The Minimitar would have high uh, explosive resistance and kinetic resistance, and it would deal explosive damage. So this drone would work best in uh, Minimitar space. And then since we're doing the uh, Kaldari one right now, right? So this one would have uh, <coughs> mostly kinetic resistance with some thermal resistance. So it worked best in the Kaldari space. And it deals uh, kinetic damage, right? So that's the kind of damage that we want to deal in uh, this type of space. So depending what faction you are, depending what type of ship you're building, depending for which uh, faction, you're going to want to uh, specialize. Specialize that ship to be the best it can be when it's uh, trying to specialize it, right? So if we go here, we could just uh, buy these, I guess. View details. Uh, oh no, do we just buy like 10? 10, 10 of them or something? So if we need more of them, we could buy more of them. So we just get some like uh, hornets here, right? So we actually uh, have some over here. So I wonder how we should do that then, right? So if we're trying to keep it like uh, separate or throw it together. Um, 
So we have these here, right? So we have droads. We have the Caldari droads. Maybe we'll just uh, get the other droads as well, right? So we have hobgoblins. Maybe we just get like 10 of each of them, right? We're just doing a Caldari at the moment. Let's just stick with this, right? Let's just stick with the Caldari drone, right? Here's the late century drones. We're making a Caldari ship. So let's just stick with the Caldari drones, which is just the uh, Hornet level 1. So if we have the Hornet level 1, this ship has a uh, space for one drone in it. So we could drag this one drone in it, and our DPS would go from a uh, 4.1. 4.1 up to 16.3. So that's how much DPS the drone adds, right? The drone adds 12.2 DPS. So the drones, drones just add so much damage to the ship. <clears throat> so that'd be the first thing, right? The very first thing to do to your ship, get drones for it, throw it in there. That increases the damage. And then uh, something that we wanted to do, right? This ship, we could uh, right click it. We say strip the fitting. And this would just give us a civilian Gatling laser and a mining laser, which we could uh, do with that. If we wanted to create a combat ship, we could just put uh, two civilian Gatling lasers on here. The our DPS is a uh, 20.4, and this uh, ship is just focusing on doing a DPS now, right? So we just have uh, two, two weapons, just the afterburner, and we have the drones. So this would be like the combat ship, right? So this would be a good combat ship. And if we wanted to make a mining ship, right? So let's, <clears throat> let's just uh, rename this, right? How do we uh, rename it? All right. So let's just say, uh, what? Combat Abyss. Combat Abyss 1. That makes sense. So here's the uh, Combat Abyss 1, right? Then let's just uh, board this ship here. And let's just uh, give it the mining lasers, right? We can throw the civilian afterburner here. And we can throw the uh, civilian mining lasers on here. And we can throw a drone in here, right? So I'll just give it a way to actually attack enemy ships, right? 12.2 DPS. So we don't even need a uh, weapon. We don't even need a weapon on this ship. So this ship can just go mine if we want, right? We have two mining lasers, civilian mining lasers. We have the drones. And we could try uh, fitting them out with uh, different things, right? So uh, <clears throat> I think we'll just worry about the mining ship for now, right? Just because it's uh, easier. We don't have to deal with ammunition or anything. So we could go see the civilian miner, right? Show information. We go to, oh, there's no uh, variations, right? Attributes, 6.93. So let's just uh, see if we have some miner ones in the high slot. So we go over here. Civilian miners. There's the uh, civilian miners, right? But there's also the uh, miner one. So you just throw up here. We have civilian miners. We have miner ones. Those are the things that we know. They're like uh, mid slots. We have like uh, civilian afterburners. What up, and civilian afterburners? So you just keep these here, right? These are the modules that we've uh, seen before. If we wanted to buy this thing, we could just click on the browser tab here. Go to uh, hardware, go to high slots, and we're just looking for turrets and launchers. We're looking for harvest equipment, mining lasers, and here's the uh, civilian miner, right? And here's the miner one. So if we right click this, we say compare. Then we right click the miner one, and we say compare. Then we start clicking these uh, buttons to actually uh, compare them, right? You might have to uh, drag this open. I think it starts really small. Then you have to drag it open. So let's just uh, check to see what these are, right? The civilian miner compared to the miner one. Activation cost. We check the like, tech level one, maybe. Structure hit points. Mining about. CPU usage. Activation time. Beta level, maybe. Optimal range. Power grid usage. You can only have 10 attributes. All right. So what we can do. Estimated price, right? That's free. So the miner one, you're gonna have to spend a bit of money to buy it. It's gonna cost like uh, ten thousand to buy it, something like ten thousand to buy it. So you buy the miner one, and then we can equip it on the ship, and the CPU usage. So it <coughs> has a lower requirement, right? So it has a lower requirement. Activation time takes sixty seconds. Range is the same. So the only thing that changes is the uh, mining about goes up. Activation time goes up. 
I guess the main thing would be the CPU usage goes down, right? So if you go here, we have them. If we show information about it. So it's just a quit one, crypto miner one, and a civilian miner. It says a 0 0.7 M3 a second, 0 0.8 M3 a second. So pretty much exactly the same, right? Miner one mines a little bit better. But I guess the main thing is it allows you to have a little bit more uh, space to equip other things, right? So if you have the civilian miners, we got CPU 30, power 22, and this just gives us an extra 5 CPU, right? So we got the civilian miner, we got the miner 1. So just by doing that, we get an extra 10 CPU to equip other things onto it. And we get like another 0 0.2 M3 per second. So I guess that was a good way to improve that, right? We got an extra 10 CPU to equip things if we want. Maybe we could look at uh, upgrading the afterburner, right? I think we just have to go here. Go look for the uh, middle slot, search for propulsion, search for 1MN afterburners, right? I think we have some. So you just say like a 1MN afterburner. Let's just uh, stack everything. Stack everything. 1MN afterburners. So we already have that. So this thing might be an upgrade to the civilian one, right? So it's a right click and compare. So let's just uh, <coughs> reset everything. Reset. I wonder if we could uh, go like this and then uh, compare these two things. Oh, we can. Okay. So let's uh, try to upgrade the civilian afterburner to the afterburner, right? So we'll just uh, click the same things, right? I think we've selected uh, up to 10 different options. Select up to 10 different options here. So I guess the beta level doesn't change, the tech level doesn't change. Activation times still like 10 seconds, right? We'll just leave that up though. Thrust, so that's always the same, right? So I guess we should just, uh, we'll just leave up what the difference is, right? So the difference is 20 gigajoule, so all this. So I guess the uh, price is the difference, right? What about Afterburner? So these would cost you like uh, 20,000. So bring up the cost of your ship a little bit. Activation cost is uh, five, so it costs four times as much. Costs four times as much to activate. But it's almost uh, twice as good for that. And it requires a lot more to fit it, right? So like 10 power grid to fit it, 15 CPU to fit it. But if we do that, then we can almost increase the uh, movement speed by like 100%. Activation cost. <clears throat> so we just have to watch about our uh, capacitor over here, right? So if we were to do that, take this uh, spillate afterburner. So it says we move at like uh, 541 meters a sec. 541 meters a sec. Now we've at uh, 726 meters a sec. 726. So that's like another like 200 movement speed, right? 5736. It was like 526. 541. So just by upgrading that, we got a new afterburner, right? So that'd be the next thing. Get rid of your uh, civilian modules and get uh, actual modules. So I guess the only thing we have on here is just uh, minor ones and the drone. Oh yeah, the drone, minor ones, upgrade those for the civilian ones. One MN afterburner one. And the MS. And then we have to find uh, other things for the ship, right? So it says we're a shield ship. So we're going to need to get some shields, right? <coughs> so we get like a shield extender, or we get a shield booster, or we get a shield hardener. So if we were to go with, uh, hey, let's go with the shield booster or something, right? Let me just check that. So we get the uh, small one, maybe. So it looks like there's a, a civilian shield booster, right? So let's just check that out. 3,000. We can't even uh, get it. We can't even buy a civilian shield booster. I guess let's just uh, start with the small shield booster, right? That's the basic one. So this one will cost 16,000. Go to the mid slots. Small shield booster. I wonder if we should get the uh, small uh, shield extender too, right? So also the uh, small shield extender. Which I guess we don't have any. Alright. So we're going to have to buy that. We're going to have to buy the uh, shield extenders. Small. 
<coughs> shield extender small. We click the wrong thing. Small shield extender one. So you can just buy like 10 of them or something. So I think we'll just try to like uh, stock and keep like maybe like 10 of each one. So we got uh, shield boosters. You ever get details. So it's just about like 7 of them, right? We'll just try to keep like 10 of each thing at our stop. I think like drones, I think we already like had 2 of them, right? So here we go, civilian miner. <clears throat> so we got that small shield extender, small shield booster. We get like a multi spectrum shield hardener. I guess that's another thing. So let's just go here. Search for shield hardeners. We'll search for multi spectrum or we get kinetic, right? I think we just need a kinetic mostly. We get the uh, civilian kinetic one. Are these hard to get to? 48,000 compared to this one, right? 125,000. So I think usually you just get the <coughs> non civilian one, right? So we'll just compare them, right? Civilian kinetic shield hardener. Compare with the uh, kinetic shield hardener one. Compare. Right? Then we just cl uh, uh, click here to check things. I don't think we ever use the civilian ones. Maybe we just avoid them. Maybe we just don't use them. Kinetic damage resistance. 28% versus 40%. Power grid usage. That's the same CPU usage. So it takes the same amount to equip it, right? It requires more to activate it. 40%. So we'll just get that shield harder one, right? Kinetic shield harder. Do we have those? No, it doesn't look like we do. So we can do that. Kinetic shield harder. I don't know if we should buy like 10 of them. They seem expensive, right? So we got that. Break kinetic shield requires 40 CPU units, but only 27 are available. <clears throat> Alright, so we can't uh, use this module on the ship. We can't use it on this uh, mining ship. Could get a shield booster, maybe? Maybe that would fit? That would fit. That would just barely fit. But then it uh, depletes in 60 to seconds, right? So you can just get a small shield extender, maybe. That way we're stable, right? So if we're doing that, that's going to deplete everything. So let's just go with a small shield extender then, right? That leaves us with 7 CPU, 11 power grid. Then you try to figure out something to go in the bottom slots, right? So go to the bottom, maybe get like a mining upgrade, right? For a mining ship, maybe get a mining laser upgrade 1. So we still can't use this yet. We still have to actually uh, learn the skill, right? I wonder if we should just throw it to the top then, right? Binding laser 1. If we learned that skill. So I guess if we uh, need something, we throw it up. Let's just throw binding upgrades 1 up to the top. It'll be uh, learned in uh, 23 minutes. And then we can uh, throw this mining laser upgrade one on here if we want. And if we uh, wanted, maybe we could throw a second one. Oh no, we can't. We can't even uh, fit this thing, right? So with this thing on, we can't even uh, fit them, right? So let's simulate the ship. So just by equipping it, increases our CPU usage, right? Yeah, CPU 7. So we can't actually uh, use a binding laser upgrade. Alright, so we can't actually use a binding laser upgrade on the ship. It doesn't uh, fit with the binding lasers, right? So we'd have to figure out something else to put on the ship then. So we can't actually use binding lasers on the ship. We search for something that does a shield or turrets and launchers maybe. Engineering equipment. Maybe engineering equipment, power diagnostic system. Is that the one that increases shields? <clears throat> so 
So you can try to play this thing on here. This thing's pretty much uh, should be should be good for all ships that use shields, right? Power diagnostic system. I think that we had some, right? So let's go here. If we already had some, then we'll just uh, add them to it, right? Power diagnostic system. So we didn't actually have any. So let's throw this on here. This mining laser, we can't actually use it on the ship. Oh, we still can't use that? What? Does this uh, take power away? Why is the CPU lower? <coughs> I guess this thing has higher uh, CPU requirements, right? CPU use is 18. So we can't use this ship, this module on here. So I wonder if we should like uh, do a different type of video, right? Because we're thinking like as we're going through here, right? Maybe it's uh, hard to follow or maybe it's easy to follow or maybe we're just having trouble fitting ships. So we try to put this on here that doesn't fit. Well, we could just make a video where like uh, these are the modules that fit or a presentation or something. So you have to figure that out, right? Do we just do like a page with different fits or something? Yeah, figure out. Or we'll uh, pause the video. We'll come back, right? We'll pause. We'll think about it. Then maybe we'll try checking some things. Then maybe we'll come back.